the class. And it's my pleasure being with you here again on Class Online School. As always, you are my community. Our previous class, we discussed e-commerce. And we saw e-commerce as a form of commerce. We saw the e added to the commerce as electronic commerce, which is commerce done on the internet or commerce done online. We saw the features, we saw the differences between the traditional commerce and e-commerce. Today we are taking the historical development of commerce. How did commerce come to be? Then during the days of our forefathers, our forefathers, men were producing foods majorly for their family. Agriculture was majorly for the production of food for one's family. And so whatever you grow is for just you and your entire family. But as the day goes by, the year goes by, man's need becomes so many that man cannot produce what he or she wants by itself. And so there is need for other people to come to the rescue. People who are farming variety of products that just one person alone cannot take care of. And so our need might cut across what other people are producing. That led to the introduction of the butter market, trade by butter, whereby you exchange your product for my product. For example, I produce coconut, palm oil, and you have yam, plantain. I can come with my palm oil and my coconut to exchange for your plantain and your yam. That led to the introduction of butter trade, whereby we exchange goods for goods. That way, man's need was met to an extent because I can look for those who needed my product but have what I needed to exchange for. This trade was done internally within members of a village, a cultural group, and a community. A time comes, people from other neighboring villages, other neighboring ethnic groups, and other cultural groups start coming to exchange their goods for what we have, and we are exchanging our goods for what they have. That was another landmark in the introduction of commercial activities in the world. And then comes another form of trade that led to foreigners coming into our country for trade. The Trans-Sahara Trade, whereby foreigners through the desert come with their horses, their donkeys, their camel through the desert to come to exchange goods for their own goods. They exchange their goods and give us their own goods. For example, their clothing, their swords, their books and other things that makes life easier for us here and they take our own agro product and sometimes our slave are exchange for commodities. That was the advent of foreign trade, the trans-Sahara trade that people in the Arabian country pass through the desert to the northern part of the world and transactions are carried out. Then after that was another landmark that of the missionary. When the missionary came, they came with the purpose of Christianizing Nigeria, came with the purpose of turning us into Christian, into Christians. And then other things followed their gesture, business activity followed through. As they come with the aim of educating us in the Christian way, there was other order, there were others too who came to buy our products. There was the introduction of other forms of money like gold, silver, carrying money in exchange for our produce. And they brought in clothes, silver, gold to buy off our agro products and other things that we can grow economically within our vicinity. That again stands as a landmark. But another breakthrough happens during the slave trade. When the foreigners were coming to trade, they trade for humans. Humans were giving them a form of slave, and our people were taken as slaves. That brought about the slave trade. But there come the abolishment of slave trade by the British government. That brings a halt to slave trade. But after the halt of slave trade, trade did not stop. Other products, other agro products were still imported out of the country. 
like our palm oil, our granules, our yams, and other agro products that they think will serve their main basic needs out there. A company that actually serves as a good uh, uh, source between us and the foreign world was the USC. That company was out there to serve as a middleman between Nigeria and other countries where they traded commodities, products, produce, goods and services. But there was a boom that happened in the 60s during which there was discovery of crude. Crude became the order of the day together with other of our agro products. The boom of 1960 brought about another historical development in the commercial world. There, crude was discovered in Nigeria and that attracted many foreigners into the country. And so, for us to export crude, international trade was brought in because our crude is needed. They are products that are required to be exported. As crude was being exported, other agro products, other of our services, other of our products are equally growing. And that led to a bigger market in the African setting, particularly in Nigeria. This oil boom actually brought about good exposure, good awareness on the part of the country and on the part of many individuals. There comes the computer age. There comes the jet age. That led to what we have now as e-commerce. That was what we discussed the other time. The e-commerce have turned the world into a global village, into a global world that business are transacted at everywhere or at every particular point in time. Anywhere you find yourself in the country, whether in the village, whether in the uh, cities or wherever, you can transact business. And that brought about a big landmark, a big uh, breakthrough for commerce because a number of things can be done through the internet. So you see the historical development of commercial activities from when our forefathers were producing on their own down to the butter trade, from the butter trade to the sub-Sahara trade, from the sub-Sahara trade to the introduction of the European in, into Nigeria where they bring Christianity to us, from Christianity to when there was slave trade, from when there was slave trade to when we were importing our agro products, down to the oil boom in the 60s that went through the 80s. And then we have the e-commerce that is the order of the day today that have turned the world into a small village that everybody can interact together. The World Wide Web have brought everybody in the connectivity of business. These are what we have seen or pick from our historical development of how commerce evolved from one stage to another. Remember I told you in this class we are taking two different points, the historical background of how commerce evolved and then factors affecting the growth of commerce, particularly in our country Nigeria and in our region Africa. Now let us see the factors affecting the growth of commerce. What are the factors? affecting the growth of commerce in Nigeria. Factors affecting the growth of commerce in Nigeria. We'll discuss seven points. What are those things that are affecting the growth of commerce in our country, Nigeria? One, lack of sufficient capital. Lack of sufficient capital. There is not enough capital to push business there is not enough capital to push businesses into doing more larger bulk buying and selling. And not enough capital for those who want to go into large scale production. Even those who want to get involved in importation or exportation of products, they may have the idea, but there is no capital to finance these projects. So, Low or lack of sufficient capital have hindered many persons from going into commercial activities. Has hindered commerce from growing. Has hindered expansion in different business areas. That is one of the problems we majorly have. 
no money. Most African countries live below poverty line. There is no money. The major standard of living is not met. So there is big problem when it comes to capital to finance businesses. Political instability. Those who rules are changed from time to time. Every four, four years, there was the era of military rule. Now the era, era of um, civilian rule, democracy, change of government from one hand to another, uh, different policies coming up, going out, different things phasing in and out. Standard that were met years before a, a, a new ruler comes in are no longer the standard that have to be met when a new ruler comes in. Laws are made, decrees are made, standards are made. Different things interfere with importation and exportation. Different things interfere with uh, foreign trade, import and export. Different things make business uh, difficult for people to run because of one policy or the other. So political instability have hindered so many from going into business. Those that were in business previously will just go out of business because the political uh, system operated then or the new system, new laws, new whatever that have come into place did not favor their form of business. And so that kind of business can just face a political instability. We have low savings. In Africa, we lack saving culture. Nigeria particularly as a case study lacks saving culture. We eat to zero. Most of us eat to zero. We eat and even owe to what we are eating. So there is no money, no enough. The employment opportunity acts there, it's not paying people enough to meet up their monthly expenditure, their daily expenditure, their yearly expenditure. So at the end of the day, no savings. These savings, ordinarily if they have come, it will help them to think outside the box, to know what they will invest their money on. And these investments may come in form of commercial activities. But when the finances are not there, thinking outside the box may just be thinking on zero. You may not have the mind to think of other things to do. That is another thing. Low saving cost. Lack of adequate commercial facilities. Lack of adequate facilities. Commercial facilities. These facilities that may aid production, that may aid increase in buying, or that may aid higher rates of production are not there. Let's take for example in our agro-industry. We are supposed to have heavy machines, tractors, to involve large-scale production. That's to say, to aid in tilling large scale of land and then using other machineries or other machines to do more larger scale of agro farming. But once these machines are not there, people are doing it majorly on their own terms. It reduces their um, productivity. And so that leads to uh, lack of adequate commercial Facilities. Lack of adequate financial facilities. Facilities that may be required to carry out business. Facilities that may be required to make business easy may not be there. For example, those in the agro industry that may have bigger farms, large farmland to farm on, may not have the machinery to do such large scale production and large scale farming. That will hinder their productivity, their expansion rate and their yield quality and quantity. We have poor transport and communication system. You will agree with me that if we take Nigeria as a case study, you know that our road networks are very bad. Even our communication system is so bad. There are some places we have network, good network. A lot of places in the rural area, there are no network. Or even if there are network, there, the networks are not adequate. They may be some problems here and there. The roads are bad. The roads are damn really bad that 
motorists may not even want to go there and those that goes there may be in bad shape so the roads are not encouraging people to go into buying in such rural areas because the, the cost of you bringing it out to the urban city to take them out for exportation or to sell in cities the cost may be too high because of the bad roads and the communication system may be very bad that you can't even get across to the farmers to tell them what you need to buy from the farmers market so it's a big problem transportation and communication low per capita income poverty poverty has actually hindered a lot of things when we become the world capital of poverty, when we live below poverty line, when we live below the normal standard of living, when we live below one dollar a day, when we cannot afford three square meal a day, how do you think of going into big business? How do you think of doing trade in a larger scale? How do you think that commercial activities can really expand well low per capita income how much are they people paid for their jobs how can they carry out production how will they make profits from it when they don't have enough money to save and start off this things poverty have actually done a lot of harm than good in africa people are suffering they can't save they can't eat enough they don't even have what it takes to go into commercial activity on a larger scale. They can only do it on a small scale, which they can afford to do. Then the last, predominancy of primary production. People who want to go into production just do it on a small scale. Small scale. Because there are no machineries to do it industrially. And those who produce too, on their small scale, their produce can just get rotten if the communication system and the transport system is not working effectively for them. Their product can just go bad and their investment can just go down the drain. And they may be suffering and they are working. So a lot of factors, these seven factors have led to so many persons being discouraged in agriculture. Lack of sufficient capital, political instability, low savings, lack of adequate commercial facility, poor transport and communication system, low per capita income, predominance of primary production. Now, today's class, we've covered a number of things. We saw the historical developments of commerce in Nigeria, and now we are seeing the factors affecting the growth of commerce in Nigeria. Please go over this video again so that it can stick you can remember them and you can use them to answer your examination question. I want you to excel. I want you to succeed. Watch, re-watch. Watch anywhere in your home as you go. Share the word about us. Tell other people what we do here. Keep learning. Increase your knowledge. Learn from our variety of subjects that we offer on Class Online School. Visit us at Class Online School for more of our educational videos. Thank you for being part of this class. Until I meet you next time, when we discuss other commercial subjects in our commerce class.